What up, y'all? This is Nate Hill. Right here. Uh, I'm going to be introducing Consilience. This is a series of Consilience introductions. So we kind of extrapolated Consilience, but first, the definition of Consilience is the agreement between the approaches to a topic of different academic subjects, especially science and the humanities. Humanities. And so, yeah, but I'm more going to not talk about just the agreement between the approaches, but I'm going to talk about the expression and the creativity uh, behind it, you know, more specifically narrowed down to like the idea generation, especially just for this video. And I'm going to give you a couple exercises and a couple uh, ways to kind of generate ideas to enhance your creativity, enhance your expression and, and help you solve problems. So let's get right into it. First one is storyboarding. So this is pictures or written words that have to do with the ideas, ideas from everyone, and then form a story around it. So if you're in a group, you want ideas from everyone, uh, whether it's pictures or written words, and then form a story around it. Great group exercise. So you can have pictures of a train, a car, a building, and then you can have words like glove, uh, shirt, or, you know, tree. And then, you, so you would take all those contents, you know, pictures of, of that and pictures and words of this, and you would form a story around it. So that would give you all the content, all the content and all the context that you need to, to form a story, to, to, to have a storyboard. And, you know, you would have probably like a whiteboard or you'd have something to write it down. Uh, and then, or you could have the pictures posted up and then you form a story around that. Great stuff. Uh, next we have mind mapping, which is, a, which is another good one. Uh, so you write down a problem and then surround it with things slash words that can solve that problem. So you write down a problem, brainstorm a problem. I know it's hard to think of problems because we have, don't we have enough anyways? Uh, but yeah, you would write down a problem and then surround it with things or words that solve that problem. So you'd have a problem and then you would surround it with, 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 with things or words, preferably words, um, that can solve that problem. Now, that in itself, it, it, it helps you map out the problem because you are trying to surround the problem with solutions. And that's like the easiest way to pretty much contribute to something is to, to do your best to think of the solution rather than the problem. Yep, the problem's there, but thinking of the solution and having the solutions outweigh the problem is the way to go and mapping that out hence mind mapping so next we have word banking my favorite you write down a word then you create words associating with that word or with that problem you start to form relationships with those word with that word and uh, thought of it in turn forms new ideas and solves problems so you would take one word, okay, like boat, and then you would solve, and then you would, uh, you would, you would uh, pretty much try to figure out stuff that associate with that word boat. So boat, river, ocean, dock, rope, sailor, fishing, fisherman, and all that kind of stuff. And what that does is all that stuff is in relation, and it forms relationships with the boat. Therefore, you know creating more ideal generation for that word um, kind of same thing with like the with the problem because you know it's a, all this is dedicated to pretty much solving problems and, and, and generating ideas to solve problems or fulfill a need so yeah um, next we have morphological analysis so this is very technical this is a very technical exercise so it's recognizing the structural aspects to a problem and identifying relationships between each aspect and the structure of the problem. So you, 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 you're, you're conceiving of the structural, you know, aspect of the problem. Like, so here's the problem. What is, what is everything around the problem? What's inside it? What's outside it? What's on the left? What's on the right? You're taking the structural 
uh, aspects of the of the problem and you're morphing it and in its analysis and, and kind of looking at it and hovering around it uh, from all angles to kind of see the problem in its entirety and identifying that is, is, is the best thing then identifying the relationships of what the problem is connected to so you have the root issue ultimately me I want to find the root to the problem and everything that it pertains to that root and, and solve the problem that way. That is my morphological analysis. Um, but you don't want to do too much analysis because you want to actually solve the problem. You don't want to spend all day trying to morph it rather than solve it. So yeah, but yeah, morphological analysis. Next, we have group listening. We have two ears, one mouth group listening so this is best this exercise is best in a group so one person says an idea and then listens to the groups input on that idea then gets different perspectives on it this demonstrates absorption when you're absorbing information or input on on trying to generate an idea it is the best way to get inspired it is the best way to generate an idea because you're, you're getting you're getting stuff you're, you're gaining stuff by absorbing all of, of what you can so one person says an idea and then they get like five or six people three people it doesn't matter how many people it could even be one one per one or two people and, and, and listen to each of those people on what they have to contribute to your your idea because you can use that, that's fuel, that's fuel for you, that's energy for you to uh, help you fuel your idea. And for all you know that, <laughs> for all you know that person can help you generate an idea, enhance your idea, make your idea that much more and put it over the top. Uh, so yeah, another great exercise because honestly they can solve the problem for you or they can create an even better idea than you already have so it's, it's a great thing to have next my favorite this is by far my favorite blue sky thinking so this is the craziest whacked out ideas running wild and free an idea breeding ground this is where your mind runs free any type of like sci-fi psychedelic philosophic uh, dimensional parallel world uh, hi, you know hieroglyphic or, 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 or holographic idea anything that you can possibly think of that is so far outside of the realm of what can be thought of is best for this exercise because what it does is it completely opens the mind all the way up the mind reaches its full potential and just seeing what it can come up with uh, anything anything is possible in this in this <laughs> in this exercise so yeah blue sky thinking this is this is by far my favorite because there is essentially no rules and you can come up with anything that you can possibly conceive possibly imagine imagination runs free in this exercise so yeah so there you have it idea generations you know, uh, one part to this Consilience Introduction series. I can't wait to bring it to you. Uh, this is something that is very anticipated for me. I've been you know, waiting a long time to put this out, so I really appreciate you listening. Um, this is just to help. This is for free. This is to help enhance creativity, help enhance and, you know, create expression, a creative expression, and, you know, just kind of help people solve issues because... Having these, you know, exercises at your disposal will, will definitely put you in a place uh, to succeed. It will definitely put you in a position to solve that problem and become more creative and uh, generate ideas. So, yep, my name is Nate Hill. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Global Consilience, signing off. Peace.